It's good to see you. Um, I see some faces that reminds me that school has started again. So that's exciting. No, no I don't mean that to sound bad, but it's just great to see people coming back after a summer, even though I know the pain that that may mean. And that's, it's almost time to get out the snow shovels. I know. It's just, you know, you just got to own it. <laughs> I hate it too. Especially after what I asked you, right? No more broken ankles. Let's stay away from ice. Um, <clears throat> things a little poppy. Poppy pop. So I've been thinking lately, just the last several weeks, and I thought this would be kind of a good intro leading up to our fall launch in September. Uh, just kind of wrestling, meditating upon, musing about who are we and who are we called to be? Like, you know, this should not be complicated, though it can be. But, but what, is, what are the priorities of us as people of God living in the world we live in, and how can we live that out? That's one of our, part of our mission, our, our mission statement. Um, how do we live out our faith, our identity as Christians in this world that we live in? And, and I, I suggested, usually every year I uh, try to suggest... A, a idea, maybe a, a vision, might be a good way to put it, for our leadership team and our staff to kind of focus on throughout that coming year. And we met Monday night and I suggested this idea that we should this year seek to foster spaces where relationships can develop across all maturity levels. So our job is to create spaces let the relationships happen, foster those relationships where we can across all maturity levels, you know, potlucks, gospel community groups, um, anything we can come up with. Let's create a space where we can have these, these relationships to happen. We talked last year, right, uh, apostles teaching, fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. We talked about these things. This is kind of the focus of last year. Somebody suggested that it was not that far off from that. I'm like, no, it's not. One of our values is community. One of the things we say we value here is community, that we, we need that. Each of us individually needs that, and our, our world that we live in needs it. We've talked about the, the crippling effects of loneliness, the number of people who are experiencing loneliness, social media effect on loneliness, the COVID effect on loneliness. I mean, loneliness is a ramping epidemic. In, in our world, and, and a, a community, a, a church that exists, right, that focuses on fostering spaces where relationships can develop, not only what each of us needs, it's what our whole world needs. We need to create that. It's also, I said this is why, why we, we should do that, because it's in that listening to one another, really listening to each other, loving each other, and being honest, telling the truth. To each other, listening, loving, and telling the truth, which is what happens in relationships, is what makes us will help us to all know Jesus better. Of course, we all think, right? Watch the maturity levels. Anytime we come into relationship, which means sometimes disagreement, sometimes conflict, we all think we're the mature one. We all think, well, I have it right. They need to come to me, right? I think the healthiest of us will probably acknowledge, no, I may not have it all together. Maybe I'm not the most mature. As a matter of fact, Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, said, I am the worst of all sinners. So there's something there too, isn't there? So... In thinking about relationship and thinking about a community, I I, I went to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. I'm going to, I'm going to, and following. I'm going to read this uh, because I think it helps us wrestle with this idea of what is relationship. So here it is. For the great, by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function. So we, 
though many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let's use them. Let me, let me read that one more time because it just popped in my brain. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. There's a clipboard around that will help you. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one that teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Let me pray. Spirit, would you let the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. It's in your name. Amen. A few thoughts I had about relationship and about this. and um, This is going to be a little different sermon for me. I don't know if you'll experience it that way, but my, my methodology is a little different. Sorry, Un, unrelated, but I'm just being out there. Um, have you ever had a close friendship or relationship that did not go the way you wanted? Things didn't work out. I have. (laughs) I've had many. I don't want to say too much because some of those relationships might be in the room. That's the realities that we exist with. Some of us right here have had our disagreements, haven't we? And here's the thing, and this is the beautiful thing, this is the truth of the matter, is, and, and some of you know this, where we've had our disagreements... And we've listened to each other. And we've loved one another. And we've been honest with each other. Two things grew. The relationship grew. And our faith in Jesus grew. Without exception. When we do that, when we have those hard relationships where we listen, love, and tell the truth, we grow relationally and we grow in Christ. Am I right? Think about some of the relationships in your own life. If you're married, I'm not going to ask because you do have disagreements sometimes, don't you? Well, how does that usually go? Does one person just always win and the other person just says whatever and goes along with it? Do you just fight until you give each other the silent treatment, until you just pass it and you let it go? Or do you listen, really listen to what they're saying? I know how hard it can be to do, right? You have to kind of step back for a minute and say, help me understand what you're trying to tell me. Even though right off, right off the bat, like, it's hard when somebody's like, no, no, you're wrong. You're just wrong. I don't even want to hear it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, just, no, it's okay. Let me, let me listen. Let me try to understand. That's hard. But Paul, Paul says here we each have different gifts. Now, in that passage, he is talking about spiritual gifts and gifts that can elevate, lift up, support, and encourage the whole church body. That's true. Everyone has different roles in the church. Julie does not want to get up here and preach. And I am utterly incapable of forming a calendar and communicating it to all of us. Never going to happen. So different gifts, different purposes. We need, we need each other. That's the point. But maybe it's not just here. I mean, I think we all do have a role to fulfill in the church. I think we all have a gift, a way we can serve the church. Every one of us does. And I think we should consider that. But sometimes those gifts relate to the ways that we see the world, the way that we see other people, the way that we understand things. I am, um, most of you know this about me, I, am, I, I, I tend to lead from the head, in, in intellect, right? Or call it reason or rationality. Other people tend to have more bigger, larger hearts than I do. 
and, and can understand and interpret and feel how other people might be feeling about something that I've said, and I'm like, I don't know, I didn't think of it that way at all. I need to hear that. We need, we need nerds, and we need people who care. <laughs> we, we need both, and we need to learn to listen to each other. We need big picture people, and we need detail people, and we have to listen so that we understand what the other person is thinking. You know what? We need conservatives and we need liberals so we can hear and listen to how other people feel and how they understand and see the world. We need people that have been walking with Jesus for 70 plus years and we need people who aren't really sure if they even believe that he was born. We need to hear all of those voices. We need that because what we need to do is learn to listen to each other. It's one of the greatest needs we have. We need to learn how to listen and understand one another. Jesus had lots of different conversations with lots of different people. And he always told the truth. But before he did, he listened. And he understood what their motivations were. He understood what was driving them. He was, understand, he was listening to understand their, their hearts, often broken hearts. And let's be honest, nobody, no, none of us, nobody is as good at listening and understanding as Jesus. But when we listen to other people and hear what they're saying about whatever it is that they they care about, whatever their perspective on things are, when we just close our mouths, maybe just ask some questions and listen, then we will begin to learn what it means, I think, to be a little bit more like Jesus. <laughs> we will also love people more. We will. We just will love people more. Last week, Jim read this verse, I think it was this, from John chapter 15. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than that one would lay down his life for his friends. Jesus' words, Jesus' command, love one another as I have loved you. Now, you and I cannot even fully grasp the depth of the love that Jesus has for us. We can't even begin to understand it. And yet, he tells us, love one another in that way. <laughs> Those people, the people in my life that I love the most, are people that I've had hard conversations with. We've talked about things. We, we probably don't see eye to eye. But we've come to understand and listen to one another. And try to, try to wrestle with what it is that, that we, we really love. All of us can be very selfish in our love. And by the way, those of you that I love the most, I tend to think you listen to me too. <laughs> we may not always agree, but we understand, we appreciate, and we love each other. And I'll tell you what's far too common in our culture, we disagree, and so we part ways. That's what We've talked about this. That's what our world tries to teach us. Now, I know very well that there comes a time when you have to say, that's enough. I'm, I, I'm not saying some of us don't have people in our lives that we need to keep at a distance. I know that quite well. But let me ask you, did you at least listen first. They may not listen to you. They may not change. And so you have to find a healthy balance. 
but there are people that you may need to, to keep at a distance. But here's the thing. Without listening, first, people who follow Jesus, people who claim to follow Jesus, just can't do that. We cannot be people who just say, that was painful, I'm leaving you forever. One of the things that I've come to realize lately in some conversations that I've had is that what we tend to do when we don't listen is we, we, we look out there at whatever it is. Imagine some of the conversations you've had. Imagine some of the disagreements you've had. Imagine some of the times you've tried to convince someone they were wrong, right? We tend to look out there and we go, there's a problem that I can fix. I've had that. A problem that I can fix. And I've spent years and words and, and conversations bashing my head against the wall trying to solve a problem that's out there. And that can be a way we've, we tend to function in the world. We enter the world and we look out and we go, how can I fix that? And how can I fix that? And how can I fix that? But here's the thing. The person that follows Jesus shouldn't be doing that because we do know one thing that not a lot of other people know. And this is what G.K. Chesterton said first. The biggest problem in the world is me. I'm the worst problem. My home is the worst problem. My church is the worst pl- problem. My, my workplace is the worst problem. The, the, go clo- the closer into yourself you get, the, the more we should say, that's where I need to start. Not out there. I can't, I can't fix that. I can't solve that. I can't, I gotta, I gotta let it go. <laughs> but we have to love. And we can do that. It might mean creating space. It might. But it doesn't mean we don't listen. And it doesn't mean we don't love. And it's hard. And it's messy. And it's painful. And love will cost you something. It costs Jesus everything. Real relationships, authentic relationships, genuine, messy, dirty, hard relationships that that create listening and love and truth, (laughs) they're they're hard, but they're what we were made for, and they will make us better people. If you were here last week, I used a big theological word, sanctification. I said that's the process of us becoming better people. And I said last week that that happens by faith. That we get that through faith. It's it's believing that draws us, that changes our lives, changes our hearts, and makes us better people. You have to have faith (laughs) that Jesus loves as much as he loves you. That person that you're disagreeing with. (laughs) You have to have faith that if you take them to lunch, sit down with them, and just listen and ask questions and say, tell me why you feel that way, without saying, let me tell you why you're wrong, that it won't infect you, it won't make you dirty, and it won't poison your soul. That's hard sometimes. I, I, I say that, it sounds like I'm, being, I'm exaggerating the point. But I think sometimes we have this internal sense. We've just got to correct that error. And maybe what we need to do is just listen and try to understand why they feel the way they did. You have to have faith that even if they don't agree with you, even if they never agree with you, they actually still have value. They're still made in the image of God and they've still got something good to contribute to the world. That takes faith. And you have to have faith, and this is where it really gets hard. This is hard faith right here, that they will actually try to listen to you and understand you. Whether you agree or not, whether they agree with you, that they they too will try to understand why you feel the way they do, the way you do. But here's one more thing. And this is, man, trust me, this one is a really tough one. You have to have faith (laughs) 
that it's Jesus and the Holy Spirit that change other people. Let me say it again because it's taken me years, years to figure this one out. It is Jesus and the Holy Spirit that changes other people. I can have a 15-hour conversation with you, and I'm not going to change anything. It's Jesus who does that. That's faith. I can't change other people. I can't change any of you. I've tried. Believe me. Jesus changes people. We cannot change people. Look again at this passage I read from Romans. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Right there, God gives grace and faith in those verses. He gives grace and faith. Think about some of the hard conversations that we've had in the last few years. I mean, in every one of us. It, it, you cannot live in America and not have had difficult conversations in the last few years. I know many people have lost relationships over dumb things happening in other cities. Like, who cares? But relationships have been broken over hard conversations. Some of those conversations, though, and I think many of us know this, some of those conversations have been grace working in us to make us love people better. Even when they're hard and even when they end in disagreement, I think Jesus is drawing us to love others better. And that's grace. We just have to be sensitive to it. When we feel that hard thing, we hear, feel that needle prick, we feel that, mm, we, need to, we need to be sensitive to this reality that Jesus is actually working in us to make us more gracious, more patient, more loving, more kind. And we also, I think, each need to consider this possibility. You and I might be wrong. We might be wrong. Paul says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. The world that we live in has tried so hard to divide us, to wreck us, to create damage and split and division. And it all comes down to this. Who's right and who's wrong? Do we do this? Do we do that? And we fight and we argue and... Maybe, just maybe, if we just close our mouths for five minutes, stop arguing about what we think, and instead, listen. <laughs> just listen to that person over there that doesn't agree with us about whatever it is we care about. I don't care if it's the food you eat or the way you vote or the thing you think or the, who you love or whatever. Listen. Just listen. I'm not saying you've got to say, that's a good point. I'm just saying, listen, why do you care so much? Why is that important? It won't kill you. And you know what they say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. God gives each of us faith as he gives it to the, as he put it, the measure of faith that God has assigned. He gives us faith. Some of us may be absolutely convinced that Jesus walked out of the grave and is coming back to offer new life and kingdom come and restore everything. And that is a day that is coming. We might be absolutely convinced. Read last week, that's a gift of faith. And I don't know about you, but when I came to believe that, man, it was like kicking and screaming. And I wasn't sure, and I doubted, and I questioned, and I wasn't, I just didn't know. How can this all be true? I needed more faith. And Lord have mercy, I still do. Thank God He gives it. And after that, we see this picture of the church. 
For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, in proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving. The one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is a beautiful picture, I think, of what can happen when people focus on relationships, learning what it means to listen, to love, and to speak truth to one another. Now, it was pointed out to me recently in a conversation that sometimes truth can be used as a weapon. And I know that very well (laughs) because it is a weapon that I have spent a good deal of my life learning how to wield. And I know I have hurt people with my words. And I know that sometimes those words have been truth. But they can still cause pain. I know I've done it. But here's the thing about Jesus. He had lots of different conversations with lots of different people, and many of them were broken, hurting, confused, messed up, just didn't know what to do, where to go. And you know what? He always told them the truth. More than once we have instances of Jesus had these encounters with these people, and he spoke truth to them, but he listened first, and he loved them. And when he told them the truth, it was balm for hungry, desperate, pain, just hurting souls. That's what it was. Truth coming from Jesus was medicine, not a weapon. He didn't hurt with the truth. He brought life. Well, it's not entirely true. I take that back. He, he did hurt the, uh, the religious overly religious nut job people, right? The, the Pharisees, the lawyers, the legalists, the ones, the ones who were convinced that they were right about everything, the ones who entered the world and said, you all just need to do what we say, he did hurt them with truth. He was very direct. and I mean, he called them a nest of snakes is what he called them. Um, so he did those people, but but he wants to listen. He wants to love. And yes, yes, he wants to tell the truth, but he wants to do it to hearts that are ready to receive good news, not, not, not swords and daggers. And he wants us to listen to each other. He wants us to love each other. He commanded us to do it. And, and I believe with all in everything in me, he wants us to tell the truth to each other. But he wants us to do that in a way that that brings grace and life and hope and freedom, not pain. We have to do that in the ways that Jesus did. So that's the agenda for this year, that we would focus on creating space where real relationships can happen, where we can learn to listen to each other, really listen, really love each other, potlucks, groups, community groups, everything we can think of. Let's create space where that can happen. A place where we can hear the truth. A place where we ought to hear the truth. But whatever we do with the truth, whatever decisions we make, wherever we go with that, a place that we know we will always be loved. A place where we will be listened to. A place where we don't have to agree about anything to be listened to, understood, and loved well. That's what Jesus did. And that kind of community has such power to be such a beautiful thing and to bring life and beauty and truth and goodness to a world that is desperate for just that type of community. So let's you and I work to grow in Jesus so that we can be that sort of community that the world needs this year. Let me pray. Jesus, would you be at work in us? Shape us individually by the gospel. 
Help us to, to see ourselves, as Paul did, as the worst of all sinners, each of us. And let's, let's try to enter the world that way. Help us, give us the grace to move into the world with that being our singular focus. And, and help us to love others well this year. Would you show us places and spaces where we might be able to foster that sort of community? It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.